Hello, everyone. I'm Mike Toledo, your host on Dent Time PDR, a podcast about PDR training, tutorials, interviews, and much more. So get something to eat, drink, and start pushing. It's time to listen. Hey! Yo, what is Karakalakin got a super special podcast right here. I didn't tell anybody uh, this person was going to be coming on because we have been trying to get each other on each other's podcast since, since in the day. Uh, welcome, John, Mr. John Hiley, dude. How you doing here, dude? Hey, what's going on, brother? I'm so psyched to be on your podcast, man. Uh, as many of you guys know, me and Mike, our schedules don't always line up. We, you know, uh, by uh, we talk about every day, but as far as sitting down and getting a chance to do a podcast, I'm so glad that I've got the opportunity to do this, especially before you head off to Anson's event. That's right. That's right. I'll be there in a couple of days. You guys uh, are you listening. It's happening. I technically they're groundbreaking on Thursday. Friday is the open house. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, damn, John, dude, I'm, I'm glad you're here, man. So our topic is going to be about metal flow. Dynamite! All right. So <laughs> people, nice, people want to hear about metal flow and the best person that i've ever heard anybody explain metal flow flow and we all know what metal flow is um it is it, it's a direction of where the metal is going and you we you were you spoke about it on our old podcast that we did the other platform called pdr tool time and we had a discussion on it but what i don't think we covered much on that podcast was we covered a lot of the tools but not how to use them and why and the and the aspects of of the uh, of the metal working okay sure so you have a good way of putting metal flow now give me your definition and then we can talk about different things about metal flow and things like like things like that well absolutely mike i appreciate that buddy and you know the thing that i think a lot of folks got to realize is that number one metal flow is the key to uh, fixing high strength steel so with a lot of vehicle manufacturers adopting high strength steel it's even a more much more important topic today than it ever has been and i'll just give you an example i mean i think it was a jeep cherokee fender that i did uh, recently that was just, it was high strength steel and it's one of the new ones. And uh, there's just each and every vehicle starting to come out with panels that are high strength steel. And that's about the only way that that stuff works. But uh, kind of like, I want you guys to think about it as uh, sending the metal in the direction that it needs to go with the least amount of effort. And on top of that, um, understanding exactly what I call, um, I call it the percentage thing. Okay. Because on Facebook, there was a question at one time. And I mean, I swear by the time I seen this question on uh, Facebook and one of the groups, there had already been a hundred answers and I was reading through them. And as I was reading through these answers, I'm thinking in my mind. And the question was, Mike, it was, what do you start with the crown or the dent? Wh which one do you start with first, the crown or the dent? Yep. And as I Big was question. reading through all these questions, it, it kind of came to me. I'm like, well, sometimes I start on the crown and sometimes I start on the dent. And then I started thinking, I was like, well, why would I, you know, do either or why is that question determined? Right. And then I kind of broke it down to a percentage scale based on whether the, the, it would, the dent was actually crown dominant. And we've all seen them. We've all seen a dent. that's nothing but crown. And when you hit the crown, the dent moves out. Right. Or it was the dent dent dominant. Was it 90% dent and only 10% crown at the top, right? Well, in that specific example, uh, you literally, the crown has nowhere to, it doesn't have a way to go back to its natural form. So if you start with the crown, if the, let's just say the dent is got a real tight, hard pinch crown and very, very deep, the crown if you work it right at that point, are you talking about nothing. deep, deep, like below the crown? Is that what you're saying? Like the correct, depth? like okay. below the crown, it's got some depth. It's got some strength. Let's say it's rocked through a body line. Right. Um, and that's another example of one that typically is going to be dent dominant is when they're through a body line, but going back to the dent with the depth underneath of it, it's 90% dent, 10% crown. But when you hit that crown, it's not going to do any movement to the dent. It's not going to push the dent out. Yeah. And because of that, you'll typically get a lot of little dots 
a lot of choppiness in that crown movement that you're going to have to clean up later because it didn't even know where to flow. The only place it knows where to flow is into the dent. Yeah, it's, it, you're forcing it, basically. So you, you're trying to figure out if it's crown dominant or dent dominant. Is that what you're trying to Co- Correct, correct. And at that point, there's two different ways that I normally tackle it. So let's go back to the example with something is uh, dent dominant, right? There's two different ways. One way is an off dolly technique where you either hold a tool on the back of the deep part of the dent while you work the crown at the same time, creating a teeter totter effect. Yeah. Give and take. Okay. A little give and take there. Or uh, if um, one of my favorite ways is to work the dent up to where you change it to a crown dominant dent. Yeah. Okay. And then start working the crown because of that point, the crown actually has direction. It has a place to flow. That's more natural to its original state. Yeah. Like I, and that's, that's, that's a good explanation because a lot of people do get, they, what they do, John, is they don't realize that they're forcing their taps most of the time on a crown. They're making, all this extra work, right? Each micro low or they make is five to 15 minutes extra work at the end. I tell it's like a soccer match, but extra time you don't want, dude. You know what I mean? So yeah, that's it. You could keep the extra time. 100%, Mike, 100%. Another example uh, that I spoke about just a moment ago was the body line. You know, we've all seen the body line damage, right? Where you literally have one shot through the body line, that tight little pinch crown up above it. Well, if you try to hit that crown right then before you work the body line, you're literally going to beat the crap out of it. And what I want everybody to take a little chance on, and I will tell you, you do need to use heat when you do this, okay? Heat that thing up, start to bring that body line up, giving that crown some tension or somewhere to flow, somewhere to actually go to and then work that crown down. And I will almost guarantee you that 50% of the crown will come down based on the pushing of the body line alone. Oh, yeah. That's a good, that's it. It's a good visual. I, I got to try that more often too. Cause I like to try to bring the board, the, the metal from outside a little bit, not all the time, but uh, from the outside yeah. in. But, but if you're saying push in the center of that body line a little bit, it's going to help that tension both, both side outsides crowns, right? Correct. Uh-huh. Correct. And then what that's going to do is that's going to give the crown up above a direction to, I like to say melt into it. Okay. But again, you're in a cracking territory. So just so you know, that's one of the places where I absolutely use a lot of heat yeah. is when bringing that up, because the last thing you want to do is create the tension of the crown versus the tension of the body line versus the strength of the paint. Right. And you can typically tell you're usually not going to crack unless you really drive one through. But there's been times where I've worked one up and it just seems to be coming up like butter. And I'll even push the body line a little bit high, uh, leaving um, even uh, just so much more tension going down in towards that line. And then when you start working that crown down, it will literally every hit, you'll actually see movement and you'll see it just flowing down in towards that body line. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense because you're trying to control. Release a tutorial on Dent Trainer, Mike, on that, and uh, also that same tutorial is on uh, our YouTube. Well, great. Uh, that's that's another thing too. We we put a lot of tutorials out there on Dent Trainer, and actually a lot of free ones on YouTube. But you guys don't see behind the scenes. There's extra. There's always extra footage that you would love to see, in co- in conjunction with what you see on YouTube and more detailed. So that's something to check out. John, you is know, we, it, go ahead. We, we got to say, Mike, we've learned from our past. We don't give the teasers where we just cut you off completely. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. We, now we, we try to like value. give a, a good, you know, back then it was like uh, the mindset was different. You know, it's like, let's cut it off and they'll want to go further and watch it on Dent Trainer, right? And uh, I mean, everybody gets that, you know what I mean? It's like giving a car dealership a free dent and then, you know, they got to pay for the next one, the next one, the next one. You know, yeah. we all get that concept. Uh, online, uh, what we found over the years, it's just better to give a ton of value first, build people up, build their confidence, maybe remove the veil a little bit and let them see how great it is and, you know, or it could be inside. So there's a ton of value that we're given today that we didn't give years ago. Um, so I encourage any of the listeners who haven't been a dent trainer yet, check yeah. out some of the YouTube stuff. Check out dent, denttrainer.com. You'll, you'll love it. You won't regret it. Um, so let me ask you something here. So you're kind of creating little canals 
for the pressure to go back. Is that what you're really kind of technically doing? I mean, it's not like well, visually you can't see it, but you are you're releasing pressure so the metal naturally wants to come back to its 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 original shape. I think what I what I like what I would like people to visualize here is when the dent it, 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 in a perfect world, okay? If the world was perfect and we had the perfect amount of reverse pressure on that dent, the perfect size everything. Technically by law, we should be able to roll that dent out exactly the way that it came in right and exactly as fast as it came in and let's just say in a perfect world right right so think about that the dent goes in and as the dent's going in it's creating the crown okay and the crown's rolling right and stopping well that crown was made during movement of the metal okay so there's one or two things that we can do. We can either control the low and hit the crown and try to reverse that movement the way that it came in, or in some circumstances, we can put some pressure points to kind of um, fast forward the movement of the dent and then allow the crown to catch up, if that makes sense. Yeah, so, go give, so give me a scenario. Um, I'll give you a scenario. Uh, I, I will tell you there was just um, recently for a crown dominant dent, okay, uh, and I actually did a YouTube video on it, that literally when something is crown dominant and it's got a low underneath of it, just by hitting it alone by default, that wave is going to push out that low that it actually came in. And typically what a crown is, I want you guys to envision this, a crown is a wave caught in time. Yep. So literally, if you were to drop a uh, uh, some water or a quarter in the middle of a bucket, the waves that roll out to the side literally get caught in time on a crown. So a shock, a shock you, wave. What's that, Mike? Like a shock wave. Uh, certainly a shock wave, right? But it's a shock wave that has some fight coming back towards it okay so literally you could take mike you could take a uh so let's say some 20 gauge steel and you could hang it from your rafters and beat it with a baseball bat and you would literally never have a crown in that steel because all of the vibrations would come all the way out the edge it would be like beating a big gong okay but it would be flat so there's no edges now a gong would be different because it has hard edges on a body line them hard edges would begin to catch that vibration and that vibration level would change and in between the impact point and that edge is where you're going to catch your crown okay so and this this goes along with glue inside of doors we've seen a lot of times where glue stop the uh movement of the metal at some point and we notice a crown above the glue are you talking uh, there, like like a like a backside like a sound deadening like really heavy stuff like that behind the panel sure i, I think i've seen crowns caught in sound deadening which sucks because they're in sound deadening and you're not going to get that same type of metal flow to roll out of it. It's kind of the same thing that I talk about in uh, I've got a blending webinar that I put out there just recently on the YouTube page. And it's one that I did for my blending hammers, but I talked a lot about that, about how when blending is done right, it's tiny little uh, vibrations that create tiny little crowns next to each other that actually cause that to happen. So when you're blending, if you do it properly, you can actually create outward metal. You can almost create little spots that are something like glue pulls. And the reason why blending works on rails opposed to a door is because a door is a big foam, you know, the whole thing, right? It's, uh, I would say the vibration of a door, depending on whether the glue or the glue spots are or where you're hitting, could reach out 10 inches. Yeah. But I would say the vibration, 10 to 20 inches even, but I would say the vibration alone on a rail may only go a quarter of an inch. What do you, what do you like to go to? Like what, what are some of your tools when you're working these crowns? Uh, so to prevent these micro lows happening, uh, what, what's sure. your go-to stuff? Well, I'll tell you what I found to be one of the best tools that I've used lately. And this is something that I actually learned from the, uh, the Stan liner clan, the Casimirez. And it's using a glue stick to take down the crowns. Uh huh. I've you know I've tried that a little bit, and I didn't get I didn't get very far because uh, I don't remember what happened with it. But I didn't get the chance to fully test that. So it's looked to be it, interesting. I saw that. It takes a little while, and it does have a little bit of a learning curve to it. And the fascinating thing about it that I don't think people realize that little round dots, a bunch of them, are much harder to fix than one long line. Um, especially when it comes to crown cleanup, you know. 
So I, I find myself, even if I hit a couple creases in there is essentially what it is, a couple long lines, I'm still doing fine. And what I like about it, opposed to some of the other crown removal tools, is that um, the reason why the glue stick works well is because you can arc it to where you still have a visual of the dent. Okay, And, and it kind of matches the, the diameter of that crown too as well, right? It's not, it's not overly sure. too small or too big. Sure. Yeah. And the coolest thing is like, uh, I don't know if you take a flat surface and you push your finger down at kind of like a, uh, kind of like an L right here, right? That's kind of the way that you're holding the glue, but you're levitating the glue off the panel where the edge is touching and part of it's levitated off and you actually get a good visual of, um, the metal going down, which I think a lot of people, uh, that I, I will tell you, Mike, out of everybody who I've had to retrain from the basics to the advanced stuff, one of the biggest things that I found that they do wrong is they hide, they literally lay the tap down on the panel and they hit it and then they pull it up and they look to see what happened. Okay. Yeah. They don't realize that experienced technicians, it's kind of like a tattoo gun. Okay. Um, you never really, we never really see our knockdowns moving. We don't pay any attention to the knockdown itself. We pay attention to the actual panel movement underneath the knockdown because it's levitating above it. Okay. Right. And it's kind of like a tattoo gun coming down so we can maintain a visual of the metal movement. It's almost like and a, one of the things I've like seen, Mike, Nick, and right? I know you've seen this training students, dude. I know you've seen this. I've watched them. I'm like, go ahead and hit that panel. And all of a sudden I watched their eyes go from the panel to the back of their knockdown when they hit it. Yeah. And that eye movement ruins their knockdown look. Yep. Yep. I said, yep. Don't look at the, at the handle. Look at, don't look at the back of the, of the tap down. Look at the tip. Never take your eyes off your vision and right. reflection. Yes. But you think about that, Mike, that's totally unnatural. And anything that anybody does in life, if you're hitting a nail in a wall, dude, you're not like you're setting it to the wall. You're sitting it there and then you stare at the back of the nail. That's true. I still do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, and, and then you hit it in, that's the way you hit a nail in. So by virtue, if, um, and this is honestly where experienced trainers come in because the, the, it's like the little things. Well, small detail then, make big differences. Yes. <laughs> yeah, man. And, and it's so many times I've gotten a hold of people and I know you have, and it's just, you do one thing and it changes their whole world. And I think that this glue stick thing, once people begin to master it and understand it, when it comes to dropping a crown, they're really going to love it. The one thing you do got to be careful, it does have kind of a width to it as far as the uh, pattern, the hit pattern. So you're not going to drop a real tight, strong crown with it. It just doesn't have that ability to, it doesn't have that drive that maybe a plastic knockdown or a metal knockdown would have. But when it comes to nice domed crowns, um, it, it really works them down quite well. Now, what are you hitting it with? Are you, are you hitting it like a dead blow hammer? What are you using? To, to uh, I'm using my uh, trusty yellow hammer. I don't know if you've seen that before, Mike. Any of the dent trainer members have seen it almost in every video. So you got the boogers all over um, and, and I'm actually using the hammer part of the hammer. Most of the times I flip it upside down and use the back of it. You didn't catch me. You didn't catch that. I said, you, you got boogers all over that one? Is that the one with the, bo no, the boogers? No, 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 dude. That was my back. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. I will tell you something, though, man. I, I was at the Mobile Tech Expo, and Tom Price looked at me, and he goes, he goes, is that hammer that you have right there, is that a uh, 1999 Ding King hammer? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, he looks at me and my hammer's tore up. Grant this. My hammer is ripped up. The ends are hanging. I mean, it's in bad shape. He looks at me and goes, you better keep your eye on that. Somebody's <laughs> going to steal it, <laughs> <laughs> which was hilarious. You know, and I'm thinking who wants to steal my hammer. You, the, the, but apparently that was a popular model. I haven't been able to find one like it. I do, dude. I got an original 1998, 99. I think he's about the right, about that right year. Uh, first shave tool I've ever had. Matter of fact, I think Ding King was the first to have those shave tools because I haven't seen anything like it. And they it's some good strong. tools back then. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was actually, they have a couple of great tools and I still have one left of their tools. Them, yeah. them were from A1, man. Was it? Yeah, yeah, they were all originally Jerry Blem uh, A1 back when Jerry Blem owned A1. That's smart he mofo. He to almost everybody. That's smart mofo, dude. Yeah. You talk yeah, to Jerry Blaine, man. He's one of the most humblest dudes. I'm like, how are you doing there, Mike? Uh, how's it going there, Jerry? Well, not too bad. 
<laughs> I feel like I never met him before, but for some reason, uh, I think I may have probably met him, but I just may have had moonshine in me or something. They have the uh, same temperamental, I would say, uh, temperament, like kind of like maybe a more like one level notch lower, uh, relaxed, not lower, yeah. re- more relaxed than, than, than uh, PDR finesse, you know, PDR finesse or laid, laid low. Oh yeah. And uh, Oh yeah. Those guys that blammer about one notch lower, but they're cool. Mark is starting to take over over there. I don't know if you saw him, but he's starting to turn the notch up, dude. Turn it up. Hey, they're doing some great stuff everywhere, man. I think we're all trying to take the industry to the next level all the time. So that's freaking awesome. Hey, Mike, I want to touch on something with the crowns, if you don't mind. Please something do. Just kind of flashed through my mind that I want to make sure the audience kind of uh, understands this. Is that um, what you guys got to realize about a crown versus a dent? Okay, so you got a dent on one side of the panel and you got a crown on the other side of the panel, right? If you flip that panel upside down, that crown is nothing but a crease from the other side. Right, exactly. Yes. Right. So, I mean, you know, so the question of whether you work the crown or the dent first is really not the issue. Literally, you're looking at two dents from two different sides. The real question that people should be asking is what, how do I move this side the fastest and the cleanest? And how do I move both sides together as absolute clean as possible? Don't you, you, don't you think that you, like when you're doing that, you, you can't get greedy and think you're, I'm going to, I'm going to knock all this one out because it, it contributes a little bit on the other one too. Right. I mean, they both, it's like I said, it's a give and take. But you can't be like, okay, I'm going to go gung-ho on this crown until it's completely gone. Then you're almost going backwards, right, at a certain point, don't you think, John? I think so, because if it doesn't have anywhere to flow, the the only place to go is down. Yeah. And Boy, okay. next thing you know, you end up with a dug-in spot that uh, is nothing but crown and part dent that's all dug in and low. And you're going to pay for it when you start trying to bring the dent up. Man, this is so crazy. Back in the day, that's all I knew. My stepdad was just like, push here, tap there. That's it. That's all you need to know. You know? And I was like, well, all right, man. I'll just work it, you know? And now look at all the the things that make sense. I mean, gosh, there's so many different things that just that just make sense, you know? And look, you, you just use your head. If it's starting out messy, stop. You're doing mm-hmm. something wrong. Do the opposite. Go go work on the other part of the dent or, or do little sections uh, at a time. Don't. Don't go gung ho. You know, Mike, that's kind of what I love about dent removal in general, because like, just like you said, like I went years without even under really understanding what I was doing. Yeah. You know, you almost at some point you got to sit down and begin to articulate to yourself exactly what you're doing. And this is like the greatest thing about dent removal because it's an ongoing learning process. And that's why I believe hands down that it's an art um, just like martial arts, the better you become, the more diverse you become now, the different tools that you use, let's say the different weapons that you use for your attack. Yeah. I mean, all of that shit is going to make a huge difference, uh, in the end. All right. Well, speaking of that, if you don't mind me changing the subject for a good reason, speaking of different tools or different, the handles, what you have a handle coming out, dude, it looks awesome every day. You know, I've been saying for years, the industry needs to change, and the handles are beat, man. I mean, and nothing against anybody. Ultra is probably still comfortable in its way, but even they could use a more uh, makeover on their handles. Every manufacturer tool company needs to. Handles are the half the most important thing on the tool. What's the first thing you do, John, when someone hands you a tool or you pick up a tool? What are you looking at? You're looking at what? There's a few things, the handle, the, the flexibility of it, right? And you're looking the at tip. the tip, right? Yeah. yeah. Right? <laughs> and to have, and more than more than that time, you're looking back at the handle. You're trying to see how good it feels in your hand, right? Because you want to know, yep. you, you want it to feel comfortable. You want to gravitate to it. And handles are super important, man. And, and Mike, I never really got compelled to get into the handles until Anson sent me that badass tequila set of tools, which are probably some of the thinnest, strongest door tools that I've ever felt. And I tried to use them with my handles. And I, like I told some people uh, on some of the previous podcasts that I've done, is that my thumb right now, I really keep it on my left hand. 
I mean, I can feel it when I'm touching it, but it, I can tell that it's went numb over the last few years. Huh. And I know that now more than ever, I'm going to have to watch you know, what I do and what type of position that I put my body in. So I got these badass tools and, and I don't know if it was me. It turns out that I guess other people felt the same way, but I, I put the it in my hands and I couldn't really push a dent out with them. Because of the, the the way the handle was shaped, it was uh, what it actually is, guys. It's a machine lever that's been put on the tools for years. And in all honesty, it's not my favorite handle. Um, I had some other tools that I was able to kind of make work, but then I got a dent reaper, and I was like, just because of how sharp the dent reaper wor- was, it, it worked okay, you know. But I still found myself. I even did a video recently of slipping a tactical dent tool over that handle and grabbing a hold of the tactical and pushing on it. Right. So that's how much it was bothering me, and I thought maybe it's just my hands, but hell, what the hell, you know? Let's go out there and start showing off uh, something. I went to my machine guys and said, can you guys make me something to snap on these things? I love the tools. I want a handle that's long, and I want to be able to change to three different sizes. So they came back first run and I went live and I showed everybody against my wife's wishes. My wife's like, Oh, let's keep it all quiet. You know, I'm like, nah, man, I'm just showing everybody. I'm going to make this a community event. I want people to tell me what they think about it. And lo and behold, there wasn't many changes anybody wanted to make on it because they knocked it out of the park on the first run, man. And you put this thing, especially you put this thing on the dent reaper. It turns it into a freaking war machine, man. That's why I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited. I, I should have it uh, by the time I come back. It should be on my on my door. Oh, you're giving one away for me at Anson as well. You probably probably haven't told you yet, but I just talked to Craig today. And that being said, Anson just put in an order. They will have them in stock here, uh, uh, probably in about a week or so. Yeah, good for you, John. Uh, dude, you so, guys, I'll post a picture below the the podcast so on denttimepdr.com. They can also go, hey. What's your handles, John? Where can they where they can find you? What's your podcast? What, what is all that? Um, uh, let's hold off on that because my store is not set up yet. I'm moving my tool store, and I'm trying to f- remember where I'm going to place it. I guess people could definitely go check out the preview, Mike. And I'm going to look that up here while we're talking. I'm actually moving the store onto our e-commerce system, so uh-uh. it's partially built out. And when I say our e-commerce system, I mean me and Mike have an e-commerce system. That's right. We got we we got to talk about that episode too. That's that's coming up. Um, hey, listen, everybody. While he's looking that up, don't forget to to mark the mark the month. It's mid October. Uh, we are going to be having the Mega Media 4.0. We will be releasing the website where you can do your signups. It will be a sold out event. Guarantee you, super quick. John and I have been talking about I'm flipping back before between 30 and 40 people max. Why? Because we want to keep it intimate. We want to make sure everybody gets a fair crack at all the video work we're going to be doing, the photos, this year's theme. As far as the the, de- the cars, we're not quite sure on that yet, but I know uh, Cole Fox has got some badass cool, uh, cool cars he's going to have set up. But what I want to do for you guys is, is create a front and back business card for each one of you guys. You can do with what if you don't like it, you don't have to use it. But the photos will be sick, as of course you have a bunch of different photos. But I would like to make a super clean front and back business card with your with a cool shot of you working on the car, your logo, and on the back some information, but nice and clean. So I think you're gonna really really dig it too. So uh, the website is tacticaldenttools.com. And uh, currently we did sell out our pre-order, but the pre-order domain name is going to be linked to the checkout for the tacticaldenttool.com. And that is bestdenthammer.com. Best dent hammer. Best, uh, no, wait, I do have bestdenthammer.com too, but it's best, uh, bestdenthandle.com. All right. Uh, we'll, we'll put it down there as well. John, just make sure you send me all those links. Now, do you have a sure. YouTube channel too as well and Instagram? What's the handle? Yep, absolutely, man. Yeah, it looks like we will have them in stock probably within uh, probably about two weeks. Anson should have them in stock within about a week. Cool. So we'll let everybody know on Instagram. We'll let everybody – you can uh, check it out on Instagram at John uh, lower slash highly. Uh, so you can check it out over there. I'll and, post uh, all that. Up with I'll post on that. Time as well. Yeah, you'll see, it. You'll see this podcast all over the place. Uh, it'll have the descriptions below as well. Um, 
anything you want to add there, John? Um, as far as adding anything, I just want guys to get out there and learn how to feel the dent out. Okay. And don't just look at a dent, but get up there and actually tap on it. I mean, if the lower part of the dent has a dome dome sound to it, sounds like a thud or a drum, that means you're going to be able to move that thing quite a bit before you do the crown work. Um, if it's got a really, uh, you know, especially on dents in the middle of panels, uh, if it's got a high pitch tick to it, you might have to do a little bit of the crown work first. And the interesting thing is, um, guys that I want you to understand, even on rails and Mike, you might not even know you do this, Mike, maybe you do. Um, but a lot of people don't even realize that they do this, but at a certain point you actually start relying on other elements such as sound. Like I know when I'm tapping a rail out to what it should sound like and feel like with just the feel of the tip of the knockdown and the sound to know if I can get another pull out of it. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, it, that, and that's when you know, you really, your senses are super dialed in uh, into a dent, you know? And, and another thing I want to tell people as well, Mike, we're talking about ergonomics and people keep staying healthy with stuff like handles. And Mike, I know you do this as well. And I want to give the, the audience here a quick tip. So one day I'm actually pushing through a rear wiring harness and I'm kind of sitting inside the door jam of the door. You ever do that where you just sit your butt kind of on the door jam of the door and you push in the rear wiring harness? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm sitting there pushing and I'm not even thinking about it. And I'm like, why is my leg moving? I look down and I'm making pushes, but my leg is laying on top of my hand and I'm subconsciously tilting my body into it. Okay. So then I started doing experience. I'm like, well, what if I was just trying to push that with just my hand? How would that feel? You know, so I took my body off of it and kind of done it unnaturally. And this is stuff that we pick up over time. See what happens, guys, your, your bones and your muscles start breaking down, your, your parts start breaking down, and things start happening where your body takes over and you start using center weight, center of gravity without even knowing it. Yes. You know, and I want some of you new techs out there to think about that. Think about how, when you're working on something, how can you uh, take some of the stress off of your weak arms, essentially, compared to putting your whole body weight behind it, right? I think that's a good point because actually a few of my students ask me because I teach them that, that as well. You know, I have to teach guys and good habit. And if you're, yeah. so if you're consciously aware of like, hey, I'm not going to push with my rotor cup this time because... I had no. the, the two days, I mean, my rotor cup was like dead, you know what I mean? And I was aching. I felt like I had arthritis, you know? Now you, you tuck that elbow in close to your body and you lean into it, right? Like you said, use the center weight of your, of your body and motion control. Let the elbow lock in there. And now you, you're, just, you're just swaying into it, not, not forcing yeah. your, your unwanted, you know, uh, shoulders. Yes. So that's going to save you a lot of pain. In the future. Yes. And I'll tell you what a martial art uh, instructor taught me. And I trained in a martial art uh, that j basically used the center of your gravity, the center of your weight. And essentially it was from the guy, Stephen Hayes, who is basically the leader of ninjutsu all over the world. Um, but he calls it Toshin Do. It's a new version of what he learned from Hatsumi in Japan back in the, in the sixties and the seventies when he became the very first, uh, uh, white man to be part of a, a real descendant of the very last uh, ninjutsu clan in Japan. Huh. And he's right here locally. His name's Stephen Hayes. Look him up. He's all over black belt. When the Dalai Lama comes to America, guess who guards the Dalai Lama? That dude. Yes. yes. Yeah. And so I did training with him and they're all about center of gravity and one of the things, because here's their premise, Mike, they said, one day I'm going to get old. And if I rely on my muscles, then I'll be able to get beat up. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So now we got, they call him Hatsumi, Mr. Hayes, who can pretty much put your ass. He's like, like almost 80 years old and he can still tie your ass in a bow and hand it to you. <laughs> and, uh, and seriously, like seriously, he will lay you on your head, man. And, uh, and, and it's, it's not because he's strong but it's because he understands center of gravity. So all you dent te technicians out there, this really dawned on me when I was taking a power generation course because these people hit harder than I've ever 
ever felt anybody hit in my life. They were hitting me through 12 inch pads, making my kidneys feel like they went up into my throat. And so I finally started paying like extra money, Mike, like a hundred dollar lessons to learn power generation courses from these guys, right? His main black belts. And um, one of the big things that he taught me is that center of gravity, center of power of your body. And I want you guys think about this next time you're pushing a den. Okay. Get down on the ground and try to do a one arm push up. We'll try to do it traditionally with your arm to the right of your body. You'll fall right on your face. Then take your arm and put it directly in the middle where it's down below your chest, center of gravity, and balance yourself with your arm. It'll be right in the middle, the center of gravity of your body, okay? Well, that same center of gravity works on all angles of your body, actually, okay? So there's other angles of your body from your side all the way around front that you can gain that same center of gravity where your body weight is directly being balanced between that one podium, okay? Learn how to push with that podium at that angle, and you will improve immensely. I think that's a good tech tip. I mean, people really do need to pay attention to how they push and be aware of their bodies. You, especially like John was mentioning, you young cats, you you should be aware of that. You older cats should have already said, "Well, I, yeah, I w- I didn't pay attention, and now I am paying attention." Which you, you know. Before, I'm not, I'm not there yet, but I can tell if I keep pushing dents at the rate or the type of dents I push, my, my, my morning ritual will be like, instead of vitamins, it will be Advil and, and, a, and, a, and a block <laughs> of freaking and, and Tiger Balm, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> and get ready to put some st- icy hot on here. I'll be, I'm going to get sponsored someday, dude. But anyways, but I think, it's yeah, a good, I think it's a good thing. Hey, let's do another tech tip. I got a tech tip, John. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah. Go ahead. So. I go to my friend's house, our friend's place, Steven. Steven, these Chinese guys are funny as hell, dude. Chinese and Vietnamese guy, right? Yeah. And they're like, Mike, 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 check it out. Look at look at like my leverage, le- leverage tape. And I'm like, leverage tape? Let me look at that. They got Tessa tape wrapped up, dude, right? Over the edge on a hood, right? He goes, push on that, pull on that. And I go to push down on it, and it is rock solid, dude. So what he did is he took... A 20 inch, one single uh, Tessa tape, a 10 inch Tessa tape, faced them together, stuck them together, had five inches on one side, five inches on the other, four pieces of two and a half inches of tape, and you make a crow's foot on each end, right? So, so the, the, so now you have an anchor, a, a crow's foot on one side, another crow's foot on the other, and you, you, you tape it to the top of the hood and you let the, 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 the rest of it hang down and you do john try it dude it is strong dude and you're not it's not messing up the hood and you can put a hail bar on it dude it won't go it won't go down dude it won't it won't break wow now how wide is that mike how many inches they do they do in that lengthwise 20 the inches whole length what do you mean the whole length what do you mean well, you, you're taping it from two angles, right? From one spot to the next. Yeah. So that, that probably the distance between it is probably it's six to eight inches. Oh, that's not bad, man. No, dude, you can make that's any, any, you can make it any, any height you want technically. So, you know, you're doing those older po- uh, Porsches, those Mercedes, where there's no place for you to hang anything, dude. And you don't or know what Jeep happens Wrangler when you're for that oh, matter. Yeah. Or you put a suction cup on front of it, right? With a strap over it. Guess what's going to happen sooner or later. You're going to get whacked get right in the, in the face. face. You know what I mean? So I posted a video on it, actually posted on your tactical, if you haven't seen it. And I posted it cool. on uh, uh, Dent Trainer. Actually, on Dent Trainer, I show exactly how to cut it and, like, what, what you need to do, exactly what I explained it. So I'll post some videos here as well. But that's a really cool technique, uh, especially for your hail techs, too. So Yeah, man. That's awesome, dude. I'm going to try that. I got a hail hood, so that's perfect timing. Yeah, good. Try it. Try it. So. Um, other than that, dude, I, I think we're going to close this show out earlier today, dude. So, oh, oh by, by the chance, uh, by the way, let me clear my throat. I had, uh, I've had a little fight and a little chest cold here. Uh, we've got, uh, the Stanley event, April 25th, 26th, and the 27th is IMI at Don Cavanaugh's place in Minnesota. John, I don't know if you're going to do a special guest drop by, but if you are, you're always welcome, but we'll see. Uh, I wish I could, man. Yep. I Never know. know though. Never know. Never know. And and then in May, May uh, 16th, 17th, uh, don't, just look at the descriptions down, but we've got the uh, Canada, PDR Canada events. So check that out, pdrrepairsecrets.ca. 
check that out. And those are the latest events. I'll talk about more. And then as the months go, once we get rid of those guys, that's balls to the walls. M M E 4.0 G. So man, people better take advantage of it. Now everybody thought we were going to do like a bunch of them in a row. Like we did the first three. Yeah. They didn't realize we we're going to wait a year. We were just trying to perfect the events. And now that we've got our system down, we really can only do one a year just because of how much toll that it takes on, on us, man, you wouldn't yeah. believe. Uh, so, and we, we got to focus on some other things as well throughout the year. So guys, this is once a year. And if any of you have not seen, I mean, the fo- our photos are everywhere. The videos are everywhere. Um, the ticket price alone, not only it being life changing to, uh, people that most everybody that attends, but having the type of content to completely rebrand your company is insane. And I'll tell you guys, we sell a lot of websites and almost everybody who has purchased a website, they plan on going because they want that killer content. You know, we have to, we put killer content in their website. It's just not their photos. They yeah. want, we, we've got killer content of the cars, but they want to be in the photos. So all of these people are coming. They're already pre-signing up. And uh, we give the chance for our previous uh, attendees to get signed up before we come out. So guys, I'm telling you, when we release tickets on this thing, man, if you are considering it, jump on it. I've got a big request for us to do the interviews again, John. So what that means is that I will be asking you specific questions. I don't tell you what they are. And I candidly interview you as we already did really cool action shots uh, as you were already we were filming. So it's going to be really cool. People like it because it sounds it's natural. It's you uh, in front of the camera. It's amazing. So, yeah, that video that you created, Mike, was amazing. And if anybody uh, I mean, you guys should have all seen this by now. I mean, people were sharing it everywhere. I think Ray App News shared his. I mean, tons of people all over the place are sharing their videos, but it's actual the technician talking on the video. And I don't know how Mike does it, but he captures this natural sense from the individual um, that literally just flows with such a cinematic video that almost puts a damn tear in your eye, um, which is designed to evoke a, um, a strong connection. Okay. So when you see a video like that, you just don't see it every day. And it, uh, especially for the clients and customers, and it's to, to evoke a very strong connection to you and your service. And man, that, you know, I'm a, I'm a 235 pound tattoo guy and I'm getting ready to shed a tear over a damn dent video. You know, that thing was done right. <laughs> Yeah, we try, we try, but listen, we'll be we'll be announcing that. Oh, you did it, buddy. Yeah, thanks, man. I appreciate it. it. We will be announcing where you can sign up. Uh, like John says, people have already counted themselves in, so it will be sold out pretty fast. But we'll announce the exact website because we're changing some things up a, a little bit. But other than that, John, I want to say thanks a lot for coming on. You, you got dropped some knowledge bombs. It was really good, so we appreciate that. Well, I appreciate it, man. I mean, you know what we're about, dude. I just want to, I want to add enough value. I want to build, you know, me and Mike both want to build you guys up to the point to where, you know, that you can become the biggest, the best version of yourself. And if, uh, if all we do is just help you out with that, we are absolutely 100% so happy to do that. Okay. So we appreciate you guys so much. All right, John. Thanks a lot for coming on, dude. Appreciate that. Absolutely. All right, guys. We'll see you.